the Raptors. Unfortunately, they're on a nine-game slide. They're 11th in the East, and now the deadline less than 24 hours away where we hear Norm Powell and Kyle Lowry's name consistently come up. Amy, what do you think about the current state of the Toronto Raptors? I think they are professionals, and so when you wake up this morning, the goal is to go 1-0, and oh, and I have faith in these guys and that ability to do it. For the Toronto Raptors, this will be their ninth consecutive loss of the season. When they return home, they'll face Denver, Phoenix, and Portland. Yeah, tough slate ahead for a team right now that's trying to find himself. You know, we've been losing a lot, a lot of games, but we haven't particularly played bad basketball um, in all those nine games. I think we've had stretches of bad basketball, and obviously, you know, to me, those stretches is why we're losing. Um, but it's not like we're, we're a bad team, or we're just, you know, playing a little too much consistent bad basketball at certain times. Um, and I think it's just a mindset switch. And it, like, we're too talented, we're too, Good of people and too, you know, too too many good people around here to be like, oh, we, we do this wrong or we do that wrong. It's just a mindset switch of getting back to the basics, getting back to the fundamentals of stuff that make us the team that we are. Um, and we should have no problem. Like we have a lot of exp champions, experienced guys around. Um, we know how to win basketball games, and um, and I guess this goes to show you how hard it is to win in the NBA. Like we have a lot of good players and. We're on the bad end of the stick right now. So, you know, let it be COVID or let it be anything you want it to be. We have to, no one's gonna save us. We have to pick it up for ourselves. Like I've been traded before. I think before I was traded, it was a big deal. Um, now that I've been traded, I understand the other side of the fence. Um, it's if you're worried about the trade deadline, you, you should be worried about it. You know, way before this happened, because um, you you can you can control your own destiny. Like I said before, this is a production. Like you have to produce. That's this is the type of business that we're in. And I think the trade deadline just highlights how much of a business that we're actually in. Um, whatever happens may happen. Um, I know, you know, from, from the guys I, I, I work with every day, we all are good people and we all trust each other and we all work hard. So it's nothing that we did personally. It's not nothing personal, nothing like that. It's just the business of basketball. Um, and it happens, it's not just us, it happens to everybody. Everybody, every team in the NBA goes through the same thing. And I've been on three teams and it's always the same thing. At the end of the day, you still have to do your job. Like at the end of the day, like most of the time, nothing happens. So if you kind of, I kind of just treat it as, you know, if I, if someone gets traded, they already get traded. If someone doesn't, they weren't. Um, and we kind of move on. Whatever happens, like, you know, I have a relationship with almost everybody in the, in the organization separately. So I can just shoot them a text or say we're gonna grab some coffee or get get lunch at some point in time when we see them again. I think the best thing about trades is that we play against every team in the NBA. So if you were to miss somebody, you, you, you get to see him at least twice. Um, if it's not this year, the following for sure. That's it. Do it. My hope is that we stick together. Like I don't like I don't see a reason personally. Like I don't really know. I don't really get into like somebody else's job, but I really enjoy playing with all my teammates. Um, like literally, like I was telling them on the plane, like you know, you guys are some really good dudes. Like I know we're in this sucky spot right now. I don't know, it kind of, it would really hurt. It would, it would hurt to see people go, uh, for sure, um, in my opinion, because we made this mess for ourselves and, and we got enough people in the locker room to clean it up. Um, and it would, it would be awesome to have a chance to do it.
Welcome everyone to a little bit of history tonight. My name is Kate Burness. This is Amy Oliver. We've got Kayla Gray sitting by on sidelines and over at Scotiabank Arena, our Kia nurse and also WNBA All-Star. And we also have Megan McTeague doing play-by-play -play tonight. I think for myself, you know, growing up in Canada, watching sports, there wasn't anyone who looked like me really. Um, and, and I didn't have anybody to look up to in that sense, especially, you know, a strong black woman. And now, you know, coming full circle, I'm, along with the many other women of the broadcast, when we, you'll, we look at the five of us, um, three of us will be holding the main broadcast positions of the game, and we're all women of color. Um, so that's something that's impactful for you know young black girls who may be watching this, and that's really what I want them to realize is that they can see themselves in the three of us, and really girls across the world can see themselves in all five of us, and realize that you know if they just put their mind to something, if they put in the work, if they have the knowledge and the talent to do something, no matter what it is, you can do it. It's crazy, um, but it's amazing. I think the Raptors is an incredible organization. I feel like they're always kind of just up at the forefront of everything that's going on and one step ahead of everyone else. And this is just another thing that they're doing to continue to propel forward and to give us a stage that's typically dominated by males. Um, that's incredible. And I'm super grateful to be a part of this, to be a part of an um, incredible group of women who hopefully, if there's a young woman watching the game, because you know there's lots of young little uh, girls that watch the Raptors, I was one of them growing up, that they can resonate with anyone one of us and this is what they want to do awesome if not they see someone that looks like them on television and hopefully that can motivate them to be great at whatever they want how do they continue to focus on tonight when you have the nuggets in town well obviously with this team the amount of effort that kyle lowry and north Powell get every single night and what they're doing on the offensive end for this team is essential so i think i can speak for all of us and say that we are absolutely thrilled to be here and to all of the young girls that are currently watching this broadcast we welcome you especially because I'm not calling us old, Amy, but we're a little bit old. And when we were diehard basketball fans as kids, we never saw this. We never saw an all-female broadcast of women that are more than capable to do their jobs in all the roles. So we welcome in everyone, but especially those young girls. And please dream big. And one day, you could be sitting right here. But not right now, because we need the jobs and we need to talk about basketball. If you see it, you can believe it. Agreed. There's no way to look cute with a headset on. It's impossible. Like, look at that. Look at that one piece of hair. So did we decide we're going sneakers or heels? Sorry? Sneakers or heels? Oh, I don't know. Pick one. I'm busy. <laughs> Will the slide stop against the Nuggets tonight? Mired in their biggest slump in eight years. It hasn't been pretty for Kyle Lowry and also Norman Powell. Of course, their names have been front and center in trade rumors. The deadline now, just less than 24 hours away. There's Norm, his name pretty much everywhere at this point. Obviously, there's some, some moves that the Raptors have to make decisions on. And whether that's with Norm Powell or Kyle Lowry, I think if you look at their contract situation for next year anyways, um, there's not a big expectation that they'll be back. So are you going to accelerate that and trade them early or not? And that's kind of the big uh, question mark right now for everyone. You know, thankfully, I'm not Bobby Webster and don't have to make that decision. But if you like what's being offered uh, in return coming back to you, then I think you have to do what's best for the organization. If that means you part ways with one or, or both, especially if you look at a Kyle Lowry and a Norma Powell, if those are the two that, that are in you know, the decision to be made, I think you have to do what's best not only for, for the Raptors and the organization, but as well, too, for them um, also. But I know Raptors fans will be sad to see either one of them go if that is what happens. Uh, so I'm, in this situation, I'm hoping that they do what's best uh, for the organization. So at this point, as the team continues to move forward, here's your options, right? Fred Van Vliet and, and Pascal Siakam, OG and Anobi are going to be your core. Lauren Powell, Kyle Lowry probably not going to be here next year. Do you accelerate it or do you not? As a player, you can only control what you can control. So Amy, right now coming into this game, all you can do is go out, play, and try to get a win. Jamal Murray, Will Barton, Michael Porter Jr., Paul Millsap, Nikola Jokic for the Denver Nuggets, and we've got Fred Van Vliet, Kyle Lowry, Norman Powell, OG Ananobi, and Pascal Siakam, and Lowry the lob for Powell. Gets his own for two. Thought we were going to get a highlight right off the bat there, <laughs> Kia. Well, you got to get Norman Powell going early with the streak that he's been on, shooting the lights out. Siakam, extra pass. 
Van Vliet left open. And another one, five for five for the Raptors, and that's going to lead to an early Coach Malone timeout. Here's Powell. He connects. The three-point shooting continues to be a positive tonight. Good ball Sharing movement. by everyone as Norm in the corner connects hey. for three. All I know is the streak is dead. <laughs> that nine-game losing streak comes to an end as they return home. This is the first of a three-game homestand. And this is also, Kia, potentially the curtain call on not only Kyle Lowry as a Raptor, but as well to Norman Powell and their importance to this organization. And the Raptors moving forward. Well, both really important contributors. You know, in the long run, Norm Powell obviously has had a career season this year, and he's brought so much energy and an intensity. I know he's got a ton of connections within the, the Toronto community as well, and he's been with this organization for a number of years. And then you talk about Kyle Lowry. That's a player who has been here for a number of years, has been through the ups, has been through the downs, has been everything we expected and more. And the reason you say that he is the greatest Raptor of all time is because he really is and what he has done for this community on an annual basis and what he has done for this team to bring them to a championship. I want I want the regular birthday, then I want the black version. Louder to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear God. This season has been up and down, you know, we've been uh, displaced, uh, obviously, and um, had a slow start to an eight, and then I think we went 14 and six or something, something like that, and then to an 11 again, you know, like, so up and down before um, the health and uh, safety uh, protocol officer knocked on our door um, a couple of weeks ago, a week ago, yeah, a couple of weeks ago, I should say, um, became tough for us, you know, like we had climbed all up, um, all, all the way back maybe to possible fifth, um, fourth position, and then uh, we find ourselves um, in this position uh, again. Paris Davis to Sacramento for the 2021 Memphis second round pick that Sacramento owns. We're moving, uh, we got to do it for Matt. He's going to be going to Utah. I think it's a, uh, it's a good spot, a winning team, and you know, like um, hopefully you go find your niche there and find find something, you know, like, but I, I, I really respect everything that you brought to our organization and your, um, your time spent here. I appreciate everything you've done for me, man. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, man. Good luck. You know, if you need anything, we're here, okay? You have a friend, okay? Definitely, definitely, Mr. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Good luck, man. trade deadline is incredible and leading up to it is is, is just is something of uh, you've never is such a event <laughs> you know and and every uh, I know general manager or um, personnel uh, people from office would tell you about it you know like uh, there's there is, there are one million things we we talk about and you do one and sometimes you do none, you know, and yeah, all over the place, you know, in different places. And did we come close, you know, like to um, to doing something? Uh, maybe in my mind, I might say yes, but maybe on the other team, it wasn't so close, you know, like, so you don't even know, you know, like we might be 
it might be one on our board and on their board it was 10 you know so you you know ne you never know but um yeah there are a couple of things that were um that it seemed like um could get done but uh, we've learned that some, a lot of times these things a lot of them don't happen too so when the dust settled, Norm Powell was one of the first big deals to go. We know that he is on his way to Portland, and we'll see him on Sunday. Along with Matt Thomas and Terrence Davis, who each yielded second-round picks. And coming back the other way, as mentioned, Gary Trent Jr., who's the key in the deal, 22 years old, and the veteran, Rodney Hood. We're looking forward to this, um, bringing you on board, and... I know it's an emotional day and it's it's a roller coaster, you know. But um, hey, we 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 go through this. This is our business, you know. Like and here is our job, you know. Like to make it the best best home for you and your family, you know. Like so, and um, we look forward to seeing you soon. Okay. Yes, sir. I'm excited. Appreciate it. All right, man. We're excited to have you, Rodney. We'll uh, we'll get you up here today, and you know, it's our business. We got a game tomorrow, so look forward to it. today is Toronto deciding in the end to keep Kyle Lowry. You no, know, well, well, we're going to be biased in some kind of way, you know, you are, always are with your players, but um, for Kyle, we're extremely, extremely biased because uh, of what he does and what he stands for. You know, he's such an unbelievable person, player, you know, and he signifies or is a symbol of what you want, you know, like uh, as an athlete, you know, going to compete every day. He's He's just been a strength and a backbone uh, for this team. You know, you see we have a lot of young players, you know, and um, his leadership, uh, along with Fred, along with the other guys, you know, they, um, they, they wheel us through. Pretty interesting turn of events, Brad. We were out live on air, and you saw those two trades with Terrence Davis and Matt Thomas right uh, just before 3 p.m., and it really looked like the Raptors were making room, making room on the roster to bring in players via trade. Obviously, Kyle Lowry would have been the one going out, but it just didn't work out that way. When you look at what's out there, you know, it's, it's difficult sometimes, I think, even for those teams, you know, like to see, uh, to see these value and, you know, if, if we were going to do something, we were honestly going to do something right by Kyle, you know, like, so you're limited in, in what you can do that way, you know, like with the teams that um, you, can, um, you can do something with, but um, that's the respect we have for him. And we have to, uh, we've, we've come a long way, you know, like, and um, I think we, we owe him that respect as, as a player. Really, really tough, you know, like, and first of all, I want to thank Norm, his family, his mom, you know, they've been incredible people. Um, and he grew up in our organization, he's a draft pick of ours, you know, and, and that's, that, that, that touches you, you know, that uh, it's, not, it's, not, that it's not an easy thing to do. Um, but the other thing I'll say is, um, as much as we try to develop players and make players better, Norm made himself better. You know, like you, you see, you see where his game went and and the level um, he took it to, and that's what um, brought um, uh, all the popularity and 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 the value out there in what um, Norm can bring to so many teams. 
um, and uh, Portland showed that and um, we saw something there that um, we, we wanted to uh, bring in a couple players you know that could help our ball club and maybe dial back um, a little bit with a younger a younger player that's restricted um, and um, bring in a veteran player um, like Rodney Hood you know to uh, to come and help us with shooting and uh, and in the locker room too um, this is so um, with Norman uh, it's the most difficult thing to do because all these guys, you look at all of the players, young players that uh, grew up here and they're, they're out there in all different places, you know, like um, we're proud as an organization that um, we raised them here, you know, and um, now they're men and they're going out to do even better things.